In this video, I am going to solve this question. Consider a sample size of 2 drawn without replacement from an urn containing 3 balls numbered 1, 2 and 3. Let x be the smaller of the two numbers drawn and y the larger. We have to find the covariance between x and y and these are the four options that are given to us. So first of all, let's see what is the information that is given to us. So we have 3 balls numbered 1, 2 and 3. So first of all, let's think about the total number of possible outcomes over here. So we have a sample size of 2 drawn without replacement. So we have a sample size of 2. So the first possible outcome could be that the first ball that you pick is 1. And because the sampling is done without replacement, now the second ball cannot be 1. The second ball has to be either 2 or 3. So let's say it is 2. This is the first possible outcome. The second possible outcome could be that the first ball is 1 and then the second ball is 3. The third possible outcome could be that the first ball selected is number 2 and the second ball selected is number 1. The fourth possible outcome could be that the first ball selected is number 2 and the second one selected is number 3. The fifth possible outcome could be that the first ball is 3 and the second ball is 1. The sixth possible outcome could be that the first ball is 3 and the second ball is 2. These are the total number of outcomes that are possible. Now we are given that x is the smaller of the two numbers and y is the larger. That means if this is your outcome, then x takes the value 1 and y takes the value 2. Here x takes the value 1, y takes the value 3. Here x is equal to 1 because 1 is the smaller number and y is equal to 2. Here x is equal to 2, y is equal to 3. x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3 x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. Now if you analyze this, you will see that the possible values of x are only 1 and 2. x can never take the value 3 and the possible values of y are 2 and 3. y can never take the value 1. Okay, so let me write all this information in a joint probability table. So let's say you have x over here and you have y over here. The possible values of x are 1 and 2. The possible values of y are 2 and 3. Now let's write the probabilities over here. Over here we are going to write the probability that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. So x equal to 1 and y equal to 2 happens in this case and in this case. Right. So the probability that x equal to 1 and y equal to 2 is equal to the probability that you will get to see the first outcome or you will get to see the third outcome. Okay. Now because you will never get to see both the outcomes together, you will only get to see only one of these outcomes. So the probability of first outcome or third outcome can be written as probability of first outcome plus probability of third outcome. Now, it's quite simple to find these probabilities. Take a look over here that in total you have six possible outcomes. You have six possible outcomes. And all of these outcomes are equally likely. So the probability of any one of these outcomes is going to be 1 divided by 6. So the probability of first outcome, second outcome, third outcome, all of these outcomes is actually 1 divided by 6. So now what's the probability of first outcome plus the probability of third outcome? It's 1 divided by 6 plus 1 divided by 6. So this is 2 divided by 6. So the probability that you will get to see x equal to 1 and y equal to 2 is the probability of this outcome plus the probability of this outcome. So 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6. This is 2 by 6. Similarly, we can find this probability. Over here, we have to write the probability that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. Well, this can never happen because x has to be the smaller number and y has to be the larger number. So x can never take the same value as y. So this can never happen. You can also verify this from here that there is no possible outcome over here which is going to give you x equal to 2 and y equal to 2. That means the probability of this happening is 
0. Now let's move here. Over here you have to write the probability that x equal to 1 and y equal to 3. So x equal to 1 and y equal to 3 can happen over here. This. x equal to 1 and y equal to 3 can happen over here this. So there are two possible outcomes. If the second outcome happens or the fifth outcome happens, then x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 3. So once again, the probability that you will get to see this is 2 by 6. And similarly, over here, we are going to write the probability that x equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. There are two possible cases where this can happen. One is this case, that is the fourth possible outcome and one is this case that is the sixth possible outcome. There are two possible outcomes corresponding to this case. So once again, the probability is going to be one by six plus one by six. So this is two divided by six. So now our joint distribution table is complete. Now we can just use this information to find the covariance between X and Y. So let me create some space over here. So this is the joint distribution table that we found. Let me write it again in a neater manner. So the possible values of x are 1 and 2. The possible values of y are 2 and 3. This probability is 2 by 6. I can also write it as 1 divided by 3. This is 0. This is again 2 by 6. I can write it as 1 divided by 3. This is again 2 by 6. I can write it as 1 divided by 3. So this is the joint probability distribution table that we have. Now we have to find the covariance between x and y. The formula to find the covariance between x and y is expected value of x multiplied with y minus the expected value of x multiplied with the expected value of y. First, let's find the expected value of x. To find the expected value of x, let's find the marginal distribution of x. To find the marginal distribution of x, we are going to sum across the values of y. By this, I mean that possible values of x are 1 and 2 and the corresponding probability, so the probability that x equal to 1 is this plus this. So x can equal to 1 with y equal to 2. x can also be equal to 1 with y equal to 3. So the probability that x equal to 1 is 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3. This is 2 by 3. And the probability that x equal to 2 is this plus this, which is 1 by 3. Now we can easily find expected value of x. Expected value of x will be equal to 1 multiplied with 2 by 3 plus 2 multiplied with 1 by 3. And this implies that expected value of x is 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3. So this is 4 by 3. Now similarly, we can find expected value of y. So the possible values of y are 2 and 3. The possible values of y are 2 and 3. And the corresponding probabilities are going to be. So to find the corresponding probabilities for these values, you have to sum across x. So the probability that y is equal to 2 is 1 by 3 plus 0. So y can be equal to 2 with x equal to 1 and y can be equal to 2 with x equal to 2. So the probability that y is equal to 2 is 1 divided by 3 plus 0. This is 1 divided by 3. And similarly, the probability that y is equal to 3 is 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 3. So this is 2 divided by 3. And now we can easily find expected value of y. Expected value of y is equal to 2 multiplied with 1 divided by 3 plus 3 multiplied with 2 divided by 3. So this is equal to 2 divided by 3 plus 6 divided by 3. This is 8 divided by 3. So we got expected value of y as 8 divided by 3. We got expected value of x as 4 divided by 3. Now the last thing that we have to find to find the covariance between x and y is the expected value of xy. Now the expected value of xy, so we have to multiply the value of x with the value of y and then the corresponding probability. So the way we are going to do this is that if x equal to 1, and y is equal to 2, then the probability is 1 divided by 3. So value of x multiplied with value of y multiplied with the corresponding probability. Similarly, the second term will be the value of x, that is 2, multiplied with the value of y, which is 2, multiplied with the probability, which is 0. The third term is going to be value of x, which is 1, multiplied with the value of y, which is 3, multiplied with the probability, which is 1 divided by 3. And the last term is going to be the value of x, which is 2, multiplied with the value of y, which is 3, 
multiplied with the corresponding probability, which is 1 divided by 3. So this is your expected value of xy and this is equal to, if you solve this, you will get 2 divided by 3 plus 0 plus 3 divided by 3 plus 6 divided by 3. So this is equal to 11 divided by 3. Now it's very simple to find covariance between x and y. We have all the values that we need to find the covariance between x and y. So covariance between x and y is equal to expected value of xy which is 11 divided by 3 minus expected value of x which is 4 divided by 3 multiplied with expected value of y which is 8 divided by 3. So this is equal to 11 divided by 3 minus 32 divided by 9. If we take the LCM, we'll get that this is equal to 33 minus 32 divided by 9. That means that the covariance between x and y is 1 divided by 9. So that means that the right answer is part number A. So this is your right answer and B, C and D are your wrong answers. So this is all for this question.